I would uh, I'd like to uh, thank Amanda for clearing up the issue with the CPI and the fact that it is either not been moving or moving very little so we really can't count on it as any sort of a gauge to base right now to base uh, rates increases on and thank you. Well, and the significance about that is that's why you need to restudy these every few years just to see where we're at, and that's what Tim's job is. So that was a good comment, John. Others who would like to come up and talk to us, address us, are welcome. Come on up, Dan, and tell us your name and who you are and who you represent. Um, I'm Dan Schoenberg. I'm co-owner of Plus Properties here in Moscow. My address is 3306 Cameron Road here in Moscow. Um, I've been on, I think, every one of these rate studies since they began, including the uh, s water and sewer studies. So I've seen a lot of the data. I'd like to commend the city on doing these rate studies because they're very helpful in terms of watching rates and managing processes. Um, in regards to the, the sanitation one, there's, a, there's four items. That I think it's more Moscow-specific. Uh, as we try to manage solid waste in, in the city of Moscow that uh, we talked about at the rate study session, but it's they're, they're down in the details. So I just wanted to bring highlight some of those that are um, either some concerns or things that I think we have an opportunity to address here in the future. Um, one of those is the ability to establish um, some recycling via mechanical dumpsters at multifamily units. We have some multifamily units that we do not do um, roll cart recycling just because it's not feasible. We either don't have the space or they have so many units to have that many roll carts, it's unmanageable on a particular site. And we'd like to be able to uh, look at that uh, single stream recycling from a mechanical site. Um, and we're willing to, to work to establish a specific area and fence it off separate from the others and, and help manage that process. But at this point, I think we have the ability to, to influence some of that uh, theoretical 1% and increase it if we do it, if we look at some of that single stream recycling at multifamily from <coughs> a mechanical point. Um, Another item that, uh, and, and this really relates to two of them. Um, I've had some conversations with Tim in the past about uh, a couple months of the year establishing a bulky waste site drop-off in the community. Um, having as many students as we do in the community and, and transit in nature, um, having a bulky waste drop-off for mattresses and couches and things of that nature. Um, I think would not only be beneficial, but uh, would assist in the process of, of reducing theft of service at mechanical units throughout the community. We have to deal with that um, on a somewhat daily basis from May through June, uh, where we just get things dropped off at our dumpsters, not necessarily from the tenants in our buildings. Um, uh, and. Uh, uh, and it's you know it's it's very difficult at best to try to ID where that comes from. But when we have a building that there's been no move outs and yet we have uh, a household set of furniture sitting out at the dumpster, it's like well it didn't come from this unit or these buildings. Um, it's a lot easier to tell. We just don't know where it came from. And then we have we're faced with the disposal of those items. Um, Theft of service still continues to be an issue. I, th I know from the very first rate study I brought this forward, um, and I have to credit Moscow PD, it's the last thing they want to do is get phone calls for theft of service at the dumpster. And we know what's occurring. A lot of times we can't ID who it belongs to. Um, you know, when we go to a, a property and there's a bunch of demolition dumped in one of our dumpsters, um, and we've done no remodeling at the property, um, we know it's theft of service. We just can't can't detail it, or again the drop off <coughs> of the bulky waste or items that don't belong at a particular property. Um, you know, one of the things I think that would be advantageous in terms of solutions there is uh, we do not educate well in regards of theft of service here in the community, and it's not a one-time education function. Um, because of the turnover and the changes of, of residents at the city of Moscow, it's something we have to look at in terms of a continuous one. 
and we really have to target it to certain times of the year um, for that to occur. Uh, you know, there's, there's lots of other potential alternatives. Um, some of them are locking your dumpster. Well, when you have 250 residents at a dumpster, it's, it's really not very feasible to do a locking mechanism on a dumpster. You just have to kind of deal with the situation as it occurs. Um, and uh, I'm sure there's no owners of property units, multifamily units that like paying for other people's disposal, especially overages associated to it. Um, another item that I've mentioned in the past before is uh, is invoices um, or the water sewer garbage cards that come out every month. Uh, unless you sit down and hand calculate those each month or keep a record of those, there's no way to tell if you've got an overage um, other than Tim's very gracious in sending me pictures when, when we have one at a particular dumpster. Uh, it's kind of lets us know what's going on. So you're talking about an overage charge because and, an over an overage charge. Is that what you're talking about? Yep, Dan. Okay. Yeah. So it, it, it doesn't show up on the card. Right now. It's one number. It's rolled up into one single number. So unless you know that it's uh, you know a, a, a three yard dumpster is two hundred and thirty five dollars and fourteen cents, and you have a three yard dumpster at the site. Uh, hmm. Unless you unless you look at so, each of those, so the over, so the overage doesn't appear as a sec, as a second line. It's not it's a, part it's, of the solid waste line. Correct. Yep. It's okay. just rolled up into one number. Okay. And so, but you know, in, in this case, when we're dealing with uh, uh, you know 150 cards each month that we're looking through, you have to hand go through each one of those, decide okay, which ones have overages, which ones don't, where do we have a problem, where we don't have a problem. We're always behind the eight ball in managing that process. Um, and, and that makes it fairly difficult to deal with. You know, I understand that the invoicing system is something that's, that's difficult and maybe expensive to deal with. Uh, uh, maybe there's other alternatives to that. Um, such as, I mean, we've got an electronic system that takes place now. If we have an email address associated to electronic system and there's an overage on a particular day, it can send us an email and say, this property address or this account had an overage this day. We're actually able to manage on a daily, day-to-day -day basis rather than at the end of the month when we get an invoice bill. So just some ideas on ways to to possibly how do you, I mean, I'm that. just curious, Dan, because some of these complaints like this one you just talked about, how do you internally check this out? I mean, you, somebody's got to go around and know what garbage day it is. Does anybody from your complex or whoever's managing do that so they can say, oh, my God, this dumpster is overflowing and stuff's on the ground? Or do you have any kind of internal mechanism that we you do, guys we, yourself do? Yeah, we, we go out and we uh, uh, don't catch them all, obviously, and we've got a number of them, but we'll, be, we'll do drive-bys throughout the week. Um, in particular, in um, in our high volume days, so starts of school, ends of school, things of that nature, um, we'll send out uh, a vendor actually redistribute from some dumpsters in a complex. So if I got one dumpster that's full and two in back that are not, we'll move it from front to back so we we don't have those overage charges associated to it. Um, if we've got an issue going on at a particular, you know, as an example, we had an issue going on at a duplex where had a young lady, she's there by herself, and she kept, we kept getting overage charges on her container. I was finally going out at 6 in the morning, the day of pickup, and go through the garbage, figure out who it belonged to, and it was coming from a neighboring unit. Um, and it was the only way to do it, um, is to get out there before the sanitation guys picked up. So you, you put on the gloves and you dig into the garbage. <laughs> And it was the only way to solve it. And then give Moscow police a call and say, "Would you please go knock on the door next door?" They it's a, I'm not looking to give them a citation. I just want them to stop. Yeah, Thanks, sir. sure. Um, so it's it, you know it's an education process. After that, if they do it again, then I'll say, "Bring, bring the ticket book." Yeah, let's bring the Does ticket book. Does that work? Hmm? Has that been working for you when uh, you find out who's been doing it? Have the MPD. Uh, give them a call or knock on the door and say, don't do this anymore. Has that been working? I hope it has, but it, I don't know. It, uh, it, it works in the specific instances that we locate it and find out exactly who it is and are able to identify them, yes. Okay. Uh, you know, but in the big scheme of things, we manage 1,250 doors here in Moscow. So 
it's it's a challenge on our part. Um, so those anyway, those are four areas that I think that we could. Um, uh, and I got Maybe. a question on the bulky waste you're talking about. And I'm guessing you're talking about the two times a year, and that's what the semester ends. That would be if you could have a bulky waste thing at the end of semesters when kids or people are leaving and that sort of thing. Is that it's got to be the two worst times, I would think. Yeah, you know, the, the December turnover se season is not that big. It's actually the pretty easy to manage. Sure is. So May and June. Okay. So from about graduation time mid May through about mid June, about a one month period of time. Um, having that bulky waste opportunity in the community would be very good. We have a lot of leases ended at the end of June and the end of July, but not in the quantity that we have earlier. Will they haul it to a bulky waste site, or will they just throw it at the closest dumpster? They're we, haul we make a place available. Will it get there? Yeah, I think a percentage, a large percentage of that would, because they're hauling it to our dumpster now. They're calling it from someplace else to our dumpster now. So if we provide an opportunity for them to drop it in a centralized location, I think they would. 